I am a strategic intervention life coach and I've been a yoga instructor for about 30 years. I provide massive transformational value for women and men who are ready to break through limiting beliefs, to stop playing small. This is for those who want to see real changes physically, mentally, professionally, and in their relationships. Hello everyone, this is Giselle Toner with Ignite Your Value. This is the show for those of you who want to go from broken to brilliant, from getting the love you deserve to getting paid with your worth and everything else in between. The show is going to give you really wonderful information about up-leveling yourself. And today I have a guest with me, and I am extremely excited to bring her on because she really has quite a story to tell. She has been through some major things in life, and she has come through them unbelievably. And I'm really excited for her to talk to you, to give you her take on the amazing part of life. And we all are looking for miracles, and um, I think you're going to hear some great things today. So her name is Wileen Benson, and I'm going to read a little bit about Wileen because she's got some really great things to her credit. So Wileen is a two-time best-selling author and specializes in guiding people to finding and living their life's purpose. She is currently launching her fourth book, and it's called The Seven Gateways, Your Map to Integrity in Life and Business. The Seven Gateways highlights the obstacles to avoid while finding and living a life of fulfillment and integrity. And that's just one of the books that she has. So I'm really excited to bring her on and just have her tell you her story. So I am not going to give you any more information because she's the one that's going to tell it in her own words. And it's a fascinating, a fascinating adventure. So Wileen, welcome to the show. I am really excited to have you here. Thank you, Giselle. Thank you so much for inviting me. So tell us a little bit about your background and your story, a little bit about the beginnings. Wow, the beginnings. I, um, I've had an awesome life. I've had so many different experiences in my life. Um, you mentioned before we started the recording, uh, something that I uh, hadn't really planned on sharing, but, uh, but I actually do want to share it. When you reminded me of this uh, particular experience, I thought, you know what, I think this is an experience that I want to share with your, with your listeners, with your, with your viewers. And that was, um, when I was nine years old, I had an experience with sexual abuse and, um, actually had another experience later in my life when I was 15, um, different person, different experience, you know, different, um, setting, but, uh, still, you know, another experience with sexual abuse and, uh, went throughout my whole life, not really realizing that I had kind of some suppressed, anger and um, just not forgiving of those situations and those those men that um, took advantage of me. And um, it was not until later, until um, after I'd had a heart attack, and that's, that's another um, situation that we might touch on today as well, that I started doing some soul searching. I was 49 years old when I had this heart attack, so it was 40 years after that first sexual abuse experience. And um, just in that soul searching, I realized that the um, that I hadn't forgiven these situations, and that I still had that suppressed anger. And so I set about trying to forgive. And in the process, I actually found gratitude. I found gratitude in the situations. And once I found that gratitude, the whole everything just dissipated. There was no more anger. There was no more even need to forgive. The experience actually became a good experience. I looked back on it and I was grateful for it. And so I would say that, you know, my, my life has been, you know, just like everybody else's, all the little experiences that we have throughout our lives, it's all led up to who I am today. And I'm just so grateful that I've been able to find gratitude in all of those you know, quote, negative situations or bad situations and um, been able to use them to my benefit. I, I am listening to this and I'm really amazed because a lot of times I hear, um, you know, when people go through what you went through, they struggle to forgive. I mean, mm -hmm. they actually struggle to forgive, but you actually went, 
way beyond that and found not only forgiveness for these people, but gratitude. That's, that's major. That's really huge. And so tell us how that happened. Like, how did you actually get to that place of gratitude? Was it just something that all of a sudden came into you or did you actually have to say, I need to find a reason to feel good about this? Like which way was it? It was kind of interesting. Um, it actually started with back pain. <laughs> um, I started having lower back pain at nine years old. Wow. Um, and it was the same about the same time as I'd had this experience with sexual abuse. And um, I started having lower back pain and I had it throughout my whole life. I played volleyball and basketball in high school and I struggled with back pain during that time. So it really affected me throughout my whole life. And there was um, a moment I woke up one morning and I was just kind of like rolling out of bed really gingerly because um, when I first got up in the morning, that was when my back pain was the worst. And as I rolled out of bed and just started to struggle getting out of bed, I just had this thought. It's like, I wonder if I have to have back pain. I had been doing some work on myself, you know, and uh, questioning any Thing that wasn't really working for me and and trying to um, use the law of attraction to bring the things into my life that I really wanted and I just had that question that one day I was like I wonder if I really have to have back pain or if I could choose something different yeah. and so that day I sat down in what I call my creating chair mm -hmm. and uh, did my uh, daily GPS gratitude prayer and scripture and um, in that process, it wasn't a quick process. It was actually about three hours of sitting there and free writing, writing all the feelings that were coming up for me and, um, you know, really figuring out that it was this anger, suppressed anger from um, back when I was nine years old, that was where this back pain was coming from. And as I was writing and just being open to listen to, you know, what my highest source of information was going to share with me that day and help me to understand, I realized that I have three daughters and there were actually specific circumstances where I knew that because I had had those experiences, I was aware and was able to protect my daughters. There were specific situations that were brought to my memory where they might have been in the same situation as I had been if I had not been aware. And so that's where the gratitude came from. I was like, I'm so grateful that I had those experiences so that now I could protect my daughters. Well, that, that is really, really amazing because, you know, when I listen to this, I have, I have a daughter. And, and honestly, I can really identify. And if I could find a way to protect her in any way, no matter what the source was for me to get the knowledge to be able to protect her, that really makes a gigantic difference. So I can understand it now. Now it makes perfect sense to me. The gratitude and the best part of it, you know, was for you to be able to protect, protect your daughters, right? Yeah. And I, I just want to share kind of the rest of the story. Once I was able to find gratitude, my back pain immediately went away. Like in that moment, and that's been about three or four years ago, and I've never had back pain since. That is, that is totally incredible because when you're talking to me, when you were talking about the fact that this happened to you when you were nine years old, nine-year-old kids do not have back pain. I right. mean, unless you're <laughs> really seriously wrong. That was a manifestation of the terrible trauma that you went through, and you carried that with you all your life. Yeah, 40 years. Up until, up until like three years ago. Yeah. So finish the story. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Back pain was a manifestation of the trauma that you had. So, yeah. So after I realized that, um, that the gratitude was really what freed me, then there was no reason to forgive. The forgiveness, it was not even a problem anymore because it was no longer a negative situation. It was no longer a bad situation. I no longer held any animosity towards, you know, the people that had, um, you know, that had done that. It just, it was now all of a sudden just a, an experience in my life that had meaning and had purpose and I was grateful for it. 
And the other feeling that I had was I was no longer a victim of my circumstances. That if I could find gratitude in a situation, then it totally gave me my power back. And I was able to choose that it was good. I was able to, you know, learn what I needed to learn from it. I, it, it was now my experience rather than something that somebody else did to me. Right. And the most beautiful thing about all of this is that you can do that with everything, everything yeah. that comes your way that's not good or that's another major blow to you. And this is for everyone. I mean, honestly, if even if it's something minor, but it does have a tendency to fester after a while, finding the good in it. And I know that sometimes it's really hard to, um, but if you can find the benefit of what it did to help you, and it, there's always a benefit, like, you know, we already know that there is always a benefit. If you can really just train yourself to look for that, just imagine how wonderful things would be. I mean, honestly, it would be the best thing in the world. People wouldn't be dragging thousands of pounds of old dead weight with them, which is what happens because we all have things that happen bad in our lives, some of us more than others. Um, but every one of us has trauma. Every one of us has sustained something. And most of the time, the reason why people are sick is because they're still carrying that dead weight with them, right? Exactly. Yeah. And just the back pain is a very, very much a, a confirmation of that. And, and I, I believe that there's a lot of ailments that we have in our bodies. And, you know, I don't know a lot about metaphysical meanings, you know, behind different things in your body or whatever, mm -hmm. but I know that there are uh, definitely clues that we can take from our body of, you know, if we have a knee pain in our right knee, there's, you know, maybe something about like stepping forward in your life or something that you're not, you know, willing to do or whatever. Like I said, I'm not, you know, an expert on that, but I do know that our body is a very good communicator of things that we need to change in our lives. And you mentioned about, you know, um, carrying dead weight and it's not just about traumas. Like, like you said, it's not about heavy traumas all the time. It might just be something that somebody said to you in passing at the post office or something, you know, that you carry around with you and you make a decision about yourself based on what somebody else said. Yeah. And that's totally giving your power away. And when you can take your power back by finding gratitude, maybe not even just like brushing it off, but even saying, wow, I'm really glad that person said that because it drew attention to this one thing that maybe I need to change about myself. Finding gratitude. Exactly. And, you know, it could be something, like you said, something really minor, like someone said something to you at the post office, and but it might have cut you so deeply. It might have brought up old memories or old exactly. feelings. And all of a sudden it's in full bloom and you're now in this state of <laughs> I am so worthless and and it's just something that happened that was just minor but yet what it does to you inside internally to the psyche is just unbelievable but when you know what you know okay you are in charge you are yes. in charge you don't have to be that victim you don't have to continue to carry all that dead weight with you but I know there's so much more about what you experienced and um, I want you to just tell us because I already know a lot of it because I want, uh, but I do want you to, uh, to okay. elaborate on it. All right. I will share more. Um, I do want to share also, I do a daily gratitude call every day. This is something that I started about three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've got people that have been on the call with me for a year or two. And I, I just made it a, a podcast just the yeah. last, I don't know, three or four months because yeah. I wanted to be able to spread that, that, you know, gratitude around the world because it is so powerful. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I also discovered uh, in this whole process, um, I had a heart attack um, about seven years ago. And um, in that kind of soul searching time that I had, you know, about the same time that I was able to discover this, um, the meaning behind my back pain as well, was um, that the, the heart attack was caused by stress. It was, it's called Takats, Takatsubo, which means broken heart syndrome, which that's the like layman's terms is broken heart syndrome. And my, the bottom part of my heart just stopped working. It just totally shut down. 
And um, because of that, um, well, the doctor had told me that my heart would only be working at 40% of its capacity for the rest of my life. And at the time I was, um, well, all of my life, I've been an athlete, I've been an avid hiker, you know, I've always been active and it totally changed my life to have that diagnosis. And I could have actually taken that and just um, accepted it and said, okay, this is going to be my lot in life the rest of my life. And, and I honestly believe that if that really was the, um, the outcome, if that really was God's plan for me, that I would have been able to accept it and I would have been able to create something really awesome from it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give the credit to God for this miracle that ex I experienced in my life. And I also want to um, share that it was my own personal commitment to feeling positive, to always, you know, speaking positively about my body, about my heart, you know, not being like, woe is me and, you know, why me and all of that. I didn't stay in that energy for very long. I realized that the best chance I had for a miracle was to talk positively about my body and see it as a whole, completely functioning body. And I'm grateful that within six months of making that decision, that I was going to be whole and complete and be able to get back to my hiking and everything else that I did, that I hiked the two highest peaks in my area. One of them is 11,000 feet and the other one I think is 8,000 feet. And, um, after the heart attack, that was six months after the heart attack. Oh, I did that. That's amazing. And I, and I know that, you know, it was being in partnership with God. He, his plan was that I was going to get better. And I helped him along by making sure that I did everything I knew how to do to yeah. clear out any limiting beliefs or thoughts about me having a broken heart. Yeah. I want to talk to you about the broken heart. Now, is there anything that you can attribute that to? I know that you said stress, but what, was there something else? That yeah, thank, thank you for asking that. It, there definitely was. Um, I did have some stress in my life at the time, some financial stress, and we had a couple of extra people living at our house um, that was causing some, some family um, drama a little bit. And, you know, there were some things going on. But what I realized is that I was living a life without purpose. I was working a full-time job, making $12 an hour. I was a, a shipping manager, so I was working in a warehouse surrounded by boxes all day and not working with people and not helping to inspire people that I do now. And it wasn't my purpose. It was, it was a job. I just would get up and go to work just you know, to earn money. And there's so many people in the world that do that. And it's like the road to, you know, mine was a heart attack. I don't know what yours would be, you know, if you're a person that's doing that, mm. but you don't go to work just for money. You need to be putting your time into something that is meaningful, that's fulfilling, that creates happiness and joy in your life or, you know, your body, just like we were talking about your body <clears throat> share, shows you some things that you need to change your body is affected if your spirit's not happy. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I can definitely identify with that one because I was a paralegal for many, many, many years and it was necessary because I had a, a young daughter and I was a single mom and I had to make the money. And in the beginning, it was you know good for me because I really did want to learn and I did really get into all the corporate you know, atmosphere and the, and the legal atmosphere. But after years of that, it took its toll. It really took its toll. I had migraine headaches all the time. My stomach was constantly bothering me. I would go home totally drained of energy. And every morning I would wake up and say, I don't want to do this anymore. But I had to. I really had to. But I knew as soon as I had the opportunity that I was breaking free. And I did. As soon as my daughter got old enough to be on her own, it was like jailbreak. <laughs> jailbreak and I ran and I just and I started teaching yoga full time because I was already a yoga teacher for years but when that happened it gave me the opportunity to really expand but I can identify with that feeling of you're actually dead it's yeah. like dead you don't have a life you have no life and you don't want to be in that position anymore 
So how did you finally get away from that job that you were in? I found an opportunity. An opportunity found me, actually. Um, my husband and I had done some real estate investing in the past, and we were presented with another opportunity to start doing some real estate investing, although at the time we didn't feel like we had the money you know, to be able to do it. Um, so they had another, uh, a different opportunity that was where we could share this program, this real estate program with other people, and we would get like uh, um, an affiliate fee right. um, paid back to us. And I grabbed onto that because um, real estate was an investment opportunity that I did believe in. And it's like, wow, this is an answer. This is something that I can do that will help me to break free from that job. And I totally felt exactly like you're saying, I felt like my spirit was in jail. Mm. Like it needed to express itself. It wanted to express itself and there wasn't an opportunity out there to do it. Yeah. So I grabbed onto this opportunity and within just two months, I was making double what I was making at my, at my full-time job. And so I was able to leave that full-time job and then that opportunity, and this, this shows you just how God has your back, you know, and is leading you down the path because um, that opportunity actually led to being um, in, an, in a situation where I could actually become a mentor. I mean, it took like two or three years for me to kind of, um, you know, go down that path but the contacts and people that I was able to meet through that first opportunity was what actually led to helping me be where I am today. Right. So yeah, I, it, it was all perfect. <laughs> so you're still doing that today, right? The, um... I'm, I, I'm not doing the real estate thing. Um, my husband and I still do real invest in real estate. Okay. Um, but I am full time, uh, just working with my own clients and, uh, doing my gratitude call every day and good. creating my own content and, and sharing, sharing about the path that was opened up to me from, uh, the seven gateways, the book that I just released is the path that was laid out for me of getting out of that place of feeling like my spirit was in jail right. to fully being able to express myself, to know what my purpose is, to, you know, being able to live my calling to um, share with other people and, and help them break free as well. Now that is your, this is your fourth book. Yes. So you've got three others before this one. Um, just give us brief you know, information about okay. each one of them. Yeah. Um, the very first book was, uh, it's uh, Entrepreneur on Fire, um, Conversations with Visionary Leaders. So it's um, based in that Entrepreneur on Fire podcast and just a bunch of people. So it's an, an anthology. Um, I have a chapter in that book mm -hmm. uh, as one of the visionary leaders. And then uh, the second book was uh, Success Through Failing, where I told the story of my heart attack and then those seven gateways that helped, you know, to lead me out of that dark place into a place of freedom. And uh, that again is an anthology, um, 25 women sharing their stories of going from broken to brilliant, like you, uh, like your, your podcast or your, uh, your channel is. Mm -hmm. And um, the third one is, was co-authored by one of my mentors, Chris Crone. And I was able to co-author with him on a book called Limitless. And it's about breaking free from all of your limiting beliefs and using law of attraction and all the laws around manifesting your perfect life. And I was able to um, collaborate with him on that, on that project. Wow. And now this final one, this is yours. This one's just me. Yep. This, this is know. my story. Yeah. It's my story and the map that was revealed to me during right. the process of my, my liberation. <laughs> That's wonderful. So speaking of, um, you know, the, the reason why you do what you do, and I can identify with it because it's the same thing for me. You know, I mean, I have a calling and that calling is something much higher than myself. Right. It doesn't come from me. It comes from something much higher. And a lot of people confuse spirituality, like really being mm -hmm. connected to some higher power with, quote unquote religion. Mm -hmm. And I know that I have been, you know, in the past dealt with this subject because everyone that I talk to or work with or that knows of me or that wants to contact me, everyone has a different religious belief or background or no religion at all or atheist 
Um, and so what I find really important is to let people know that you can be anything you want to be. You can believe in anything you want to believe in. You don't have to have any kind of certain, you know, structure to anything in order to feel divinity, in order to feel grace, in order mm -hmm. to feel that higher power. And that's something that I feel very important, is very important to discuss with people because sometimes people get very turned off when they start thinking, oh, there's a, a religion involved here or there's a cult or there's something crazy going on. Do you ever find that also with your work? I do. Um, I have worked with people who don't really have, you know, a belief in a higher power or in God or, you know, anything that, but almost everybody can relate to something around the universe. You know, there's like physical laws that we, that are, that we uh, adhere to, that the earth adheres to, you know, just so that we can continue living and the earth can continue rotating every day. There's something beyond, you know, scientists did not set the, the earth in motion and keep it going. You know, we, it's not battery operated. <laughs> right. So there's some powers that are out there that are beyond our, you know, full knowledge or explor explanation or be able to, you know, reproduce it. Mm -hmm. And so I just talk to people and um, for me, it really serves me to believe that there is a power higher than me, that there's a power outside of me. Otherwise, I would just have to rely on me. Yeah. And I just feel like I would be so come so short of what I could actually receive and have in this life and be able to accomplish and be able to share with people if I only could rely on my personal human, you know, what I can do. Mm -hmm. So it serves me to believe that there is some sort of higher power out there. I call it God. I see it as God. Mm -hmm. um, other people can see it as something else. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you know, really what it boils down to is do you want to have a belief that you have something stronger than just you that can really support you in everything that you're wanting to create in your life. Mm -hmm. And you know what I find a lot of times I find that people will reach out to that higher power when they're in a situation that is really life threatening to them yeah, or they really perceive them. it. All of a sudden you'll see people who never believed in any kind of anything all of a sudden screaming out for help to something greater than themselves. And a lot of times it helps. It mm -hmm. comes to your rescue. Um, yeah. But yes, there are lots of different, um, you know, ways of going about it. I heard, uh, and I forgot who said this. It didn't come from me, but it made perfect sense. One mirror, many frames. Okay. Mm -hmm. so it's basically, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. It's the same exact source of energy, love, whatever you want to call it. It's there. Doesn't matter how you look at it or perceive it, it's still exactly the same thing. And I think that that's all that most of us can ever hope to really understand that yes, there is something greater than me. And it does come through me because let me tell you, there are times when I say things and I know it didn't come exactly. from me. Exactly. <laughs> what did I have? I, I'll actually go back and read something that I wrote to someone and say, that's great. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> and it's like, well, something gave me it to do. Right? Did you ever yes. Do that way? Yeah, right? Yes, totally. Exactly. One of the ways that I love to teach is through analogies. Um, I, I just, I've been doing an oil painting and I just shared a video about how this oil painting, I've learned so many different lessons that relate to life. And I love um, teaching through analogies because people can take that analogy into their own heart and they can discover the truth for themselves. It's not, you know, trying to pound in some sort of doctrine or, you know, what's, what's truth to me should be truth to you. You know, my beliefs are, are right or anything like that, but it's just sharing principles that feel true to the heart. And I really believe that our heart is a receptacle for truth. We recognize it when we hear it. And um, anyway, so I, I feel all of us have our own version of truth and um, an understanding of what, um, you know, what that higher power might be for us, for each and of look us. At, and look at the way you, what you're saying right now rings so true that your own heart was really in bad shape and it healed. You healed it. You allowed something greater than you 
and you promised something greater than you that you were going to do everything that you could to heal it. And the doctors must have been like, what? What's going on? You, got, you have to tell me what the doctors <laughs> when they saw that your heart basically had reversed the damage. What happened? Um, well, I went in and had an echocardiogram six weeks uh, after the heart attack, and she told me that my heart was actually worse. And she, and that was when she had told me, you know, this is probably all you can expect. It's not going to get any better. You know, this is about, you know, as good as you can expect for the rest of your life. And then that was the time I did experience some anger. I experienced, you know, some sadness some different emotions at that time. But then it was later that day that I made that commitment. And I was like, you know what, if this is the way it's supposed to be, I can accept that, but I'm going to do everything in my power to have it not be this way, to have it be the way that I choose it. And I, and I turned to God and I did a lot of reading, a lot of writing, a lot of soul searching, all of that. And then set that goal six months, you know, to be able to hike those mountains. And I can say I was really experiencing fear the day that I set out to hike that mountain because I mean, I was hiking up, you know, going to be 4,000 feet or 5,000 feet above where I live. And I was like, there's no hospital up there. And it's very possible, you know, that I could have a problem up on top of the mountain and that would be the end of it. But I was so committed and so confident in my God and in my ability to, uh, to hold true to what I believed that I set out and, and did that. And um, I can't remember what your question was, but well, that, 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 that you just answered everything that I want. But <laughs> you, did, you did two different climbs, right? Yeah. Well, the first one, um, I'm not even sure what the total, I know it's six miles up, but I, I can't remember if it's um, 8,000 or 9,000 feet. Anyway, I did that I one because <laughs> I, can't even I don't think I could do that. And I'm in tip top shape. I, I would not be able to do that, but go ahead. <laughs> anyway, I chose that one first because it was a shorter mountain and I thought I'm going to try this and it was a familiar trail the the other trail I'd never hiked before. So I went up a familiar trail, you know, that I'd, I'd hiked many times from my teenage years, you know, up until, you know, probably about, I, I don't know, hadn't done, done it recently, but I knew the trail. And so I chose that one and I had a friend and my daughter went with me um, on that one and I did well. And uh, so then um, two or three weeks later was when I uh, attempted the, the higher mountain. And it was so amazing because that morning when I woke up, it was like pouring lightning storm, sheets of rain. And uh, we were supposed, we were going to meet up at the trailhead at 6 a.m. And I woke up and I looked out there and I thought I could totally have a reason why, why not to do this. And I could just text everybody and say, okay, we're not, we're not going. Uh, we're going to do it another day. But I turned to my husband and I said, I'm going. And I didn't even take any rain gear with me. I took a hat and a jacket and that's it. And I jumped in my car, drove up to the trailhead and um, two guys were there. Um, two friends um, showed up to hike with me. And um, we, as soon as we got there, it was still torrents of rain coming down. And um, we just waited in the car for about 15 minutes and then uh, it let up just a little bit. And I said, okay, we're going. And so I jumped out of the car and we headed up the trail and it little drizzle, you know, for a little bit, but it opened up and it was the most beautiful day. It was September. So it was fall, it had gorgeous leaf colors. And because it had rained so much, the air was completely clear and just the sun shined out bright and it was just the most amazing experience. And I remember, and I'm doing it now, on the way down, I just started bawling and just was feeling so much gratitude for um, being able to do that. And um, yeah, I am so, so grateful to God. <laughs> that That is honestly like, I, I can just, you know, so much power 
was coming out of you at that moment that you said, I'm doing this. I have to tell you something. I don't want to go from my car to my front door, <laughs> running out of the car with an umbrella when it's raining. And you're hiking up a mountain 10 miles. I mean, this is amazing. But you know, this is just the proof right here um, of the power that we have if we just really know how to harness it. And you really, really knew how to harness it. And there's no way that you could have failed. There's no way. And that's really the miracle of it all. You knew, I'm doing this. There wasn't even a shadow of a doubt. Not even the monsoon. <laughs> it's like there's a monsoon going on and I'm going anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. And you know when you have that kind of determination that every force in nature is on your yes. side and it's gonna help you. Yes. That's exactly what happened. You felt that. I mean, really, you must have felt your angels carrying you and helping you and you know, yeah, we gotta we're going with this girl. It's amazing. I know. How can, how can we not help this girl, yes. right? I know I had angels there helping me too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm excited. I'm getting all excited talking about this. This makes me, this charges me up. Yes. <laughs> I am just, wow. That, that, that is really amazing. You know, just the feeling that you must have had being able to accomplish that had to be so wonderful. And your doctors must have been thinking this woman is incredible. We need to, we need to document what's happening here because we never saw this before, <laughs> you know, and not only that, but the determination that you had, because as you said, most people would have curled up in a little ball and accepted that and stayed in their home and said, well, I'm just going to live out my days, not pushing it. Cause I don't want to die sooner. No, not you. You strap on those combat boots. You're like, I'm going. <laughs> Oh, I love this. This is so wonderful. Oh, all right. So what else, what else are you going for? <laughs> I mean, you know, I know that I know that you are an amazing person. You're also an artist. So you, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I am painting I'm doing an oil painting right now. I, um, I draw and I paint and I, I enjoy all types of creation. Like, uh, I don't know. I crochet. I, I cook. <laughs> any type of create, any type of creation is fun. Isn't it wonderful? Because you are just living, you're living your life. You're living the way yeah. you should be living. We all have gifts. God gives us gifts and it's a crime. If you're not using them, it's a crime. If you're not living every day, like it is your last, because honestly, we don't know. And I really feel like, unfortunately, there are so many people that are living um, not full throttle and they don't have to be that way. And they're just not understanding the fact that the power really is inside of them. It really is. It comes from a higher level, but it's inside of you. We are part of that. You know, the divinity is in you and it gives you everything that you need, but you've got to be able to do it and accept it and say, yeah, say yes to it. So saying no is a problem. You know? Yeah, I 100% agree with that. And I used to just be so focused on work and, you know, making money. And, and it wasn't that I was trying to, you know, be like super wealthy or anything. I, I would love to be super wealthy and maybe one day I will be. And I have nothing against that. Right. Um, but we were really struggling. My husband is disabled. And so that $12 an hour was supporting you know, me and my husband, my three kids, and these two uh, extra people that were, were living with us. And wow. so we were struggling financially. And, um, you know, all of my waking hours, it seemed like, was focused on just living day to day. And, and I think we get so wrapped up in just the survival of life yeah. that we can't um, express ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really, that's what I've learned probably in the last year more than anything is I've really stepped fully into being um, to having my own business and, you know, being a mentor, um, sharing my own story and my own, uh, you know, these, these seven gateways that were given to me to help other people to step into their purpose and mission and passion. Um, I've been doing that myself and I have found that I have more time now 
than I ever did. And I used to think, you know, that I didn't have enough time and I was putting so much time into, you know, trying to free myself. But now I'm just free and I have plenty of time, plenty of everything. I have an abundance of, of life. And that's what I wish for everyone. And that's where I want to make sure that people can really uh, know how to find you. So can they just go mm -hmm. onto your website or how? Yeah. Um, yep. Website would be great. WileenBenson.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you uh, click on my blog, that's a list of all of my past gratitude calls. So if you want to learn about gratitude um, and you can even be on live, the gratitude call is created in the moment. Um, it's just the people that get on live are the ones that create the call. So we'd love to have anybody join us live too. That is great. Now it's W Y L E N E. Yes. B E N S O N. Correct. Yep. Wileen Benson.com. Benson mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yep. So that's wonderful. And I really want people to know that they can get some great information from you and even reading about your book. And, yes. And everything else that you've got going, because I'm sure that you've got a lot more that you're going to be creating. Yes. <laughs> I, I know that you are. But uh, I just want to say thank you so much, Wileen, because it's been very exciting to be able to talk to you, to get the feel and to get the knowledge and to see what your journey's been um, through all the bad things and all the struggles that you've been through to see how beautiful your life is right now. And it's because you create it. You are creating it yourself. You're allowing it to happen. And that's what I want everybody to be able to understand and know. For so sure. thank you again for being here, for being a part of the show. It's been wonderful to be able to connect with you. I'm really thankful. I really, really am thankful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, I'm going to conclude this show, everyone. So I am so happy that you joined us. And make sure that you go on to Wileen's website and check out what this woman has going on. Because honestly, I know that when I'm done, I'm clicking on her website. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go look for her as soon as I'm done. I already did check it out, though. I thought, but I'm going to go back on again. All right. All right, everyone. So thanks for being here. Make sure that you come back again. This is Ignite Your Value. I'm Giselle Toner. And I want you to just keep on being great and don't ever give up. All right, I'm ending the meeting now. Bye, Wileen. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.